Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we are going to solve this logarithmic equation. But my question to you is, can you do this problem? Can you solve this logarithmic equation? Well, if you're taking any uh, math course like Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus, you absolutely should be able to handle this because solving logarithmic equations is such a key and critical skill in algebra. And you don't really start seeing this again until you're in those courses that, that I just uh, said. It's um, a good chance if you are taking like Algebra 1 or first year algebra, you will not be studying much about logarithms. But if you are, well, that's impressive. So anyways, the bottom line is, can you do this prom? If you can, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second. And then of course, I am going to show you all the steps to solve this particular equation. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is the equation. We have log and then we have parentheses and this is the fourth root of 10 minus 5x. All of this uh, to the third power is equal to three. So it seems rather complex. So we're looking to figure out what x is equal to. We wanna solve this equation. So what is x equal to? Well, x is equal to negative 1998. Well, uh, I don't know about you, but 1998 was a pretty good year for me. Of course, I'm a little bit older. Some of you may not have even been born in 1998. Anyways, it was a good year. It certainly wasn't negative. But anyways, I look at those uh, this particular number, uh, 1998, and it brings back memories. Anyways, the answer, the solution to this equation is uh, x is equal to a negative 1998 or 1998. So how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars to celebrate your success solving a logarithmic equation. I'm pretty sure your friends and family will be very impressed with that information. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this problem. Again, if you're at these uh, respective math courses that I laid out, this is stuff that you're going to need to know. All right, so the first thing we will wanna do is right here, we're dealing with this radical. This is not a square root symbol. I mean, uh, some of you might be saying, oh, it is a square root symbol. Well, technically, you wanna to refer to this as a radical because we're dealing with the fourth root here of this, and then we are taking all of this to the third power. So the easiest thing to do is to use what we call rational exponents, okay? So in other words, instead of writing the problem this way, we're gonna say 10 minus 5x, all this to the 1 fourth power. This is the same thing as the fourth um, root of 10 minus uh, 5x. Just um, to be clear, okay, uh, just to help you out there, the square root of x is equal to uh, x to the 1 half power. This is what we call a uh, rational exponent, and this is just a radical. There's really a little tiny two up there, but we never write that when it comes to square roots. Uh, so what would be the cube root? Well, the cube root of x is the same thing as uh, x to the one-third power. So you need to be able to um, go from radical expressions uh, into rational exponents. Okay, we're talking about basic algebra. Well, I'm not basic, basic, but stuff that you should have learned like in algebra one. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and rewrite this as 10 minus 5x to the one-fourth power. Okay, which is the same thing again as a, uh, the fourth root of this to the third power. So now we have a power here to a power. So we have to think back on our basic algebra. How do you handle that situation? Well, if I have x squared to the third power, that's equal to x to the six. Okay, so we take this outside exponent here and multiply it by that inside exponent. So that'd be equal to x to the six. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to take this 3 and going to multiply it in uh, to this 1 fourth. And 3 times 1 fourth is 3 fourths. So uh, where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us with this simpler equation. Now we have log. Okay, the log of 10 minus 5x to the 3 fourth, 3 fourth power is equal to 3. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to do is kind of clear, you know, clean this up with using some algebra uh, knowledge and skills. 
So what do we need to do now? Well, at this point, we want to use what we call a, um, a property of logarithms, okay? There's several property, I would say several, maybe like a handful, like five or so property of logarithms that you need to know. And one of the uh, properties, let me just show you again real quick here, so none of you out there get confused, effectively is this. If I have log uh, x squared, okay, log x squared, what you can do is take this little two and drop it in front of the log. That is a property of logarithms. So log x squared is equal to two log x, okay? This is a super handy a property that you need to know, especially when you're trying to solve logarithmic equations, okay? So again, you take that exponent and, and put it in front of the log as a coefficient, just like this. So that's what we're going to do here. Let me kind of go back right at this point. Okay, so we're going to take that three-fourths, and we're going to plop it right there in front of this uh, log right, uh, right in this point or that position right there. So that's going to look like... Uh, 3 fourths log 10 minus 5x is equal to 3, okay? So what do we need to do now? Well, we want it, what we want to do is get this all, this part basically all by itself, okay? We have this 3 fourths now in front of this, so we want to kind of get this isolated. So how do I get rid of the 3 fourths there? Easy, just multiply both sides of the equation by 4 thirds, right? If this is 3 fourths, if I multiply both sides of the equation by 4 thirds, this is going to become what? Well, 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 over 12 is 1. So now I just kind of get this side isolated. And then we have 3 times 4 thirds is simply going to be 4. Okay. So finally, finally, we get down to this point in the equation. And now we're ready to take a huge step. Okay. Now, when you're dealing with logarithmic equations, one thing you need to know is that uh, to solve a logarithmic equation, you're going to need to change it into an exponential equation, okay? If you're dealing with an exponential equation, something like this, 2x is equal to 7, you're going to have to use logarithms to solve the, uh, exponential equations and vice versa. You're going to have to use exponential functions or exponential equations to solve logarithmic equations because they are inverse functions of one another, Okay, so you might be thinking, what do I do next? Well, again, we need to rewrite this expression, uh, this equation, in terms of an exponential uh, equation. Now, how do we do that? Well, I'm going to show you this right now. So we're just doing a basic, basic review of these concepts. So when we think of a logarithm, the most important thing to think about is what are these, what are the, what are the values in these particular positions? Well, here. There really is no base. There is, but I'll get to this in a second here. Basically, when you have a logarithm, you have a base, an answer, and an exponent. The way I like to remember this, or when I teach this, is bacon and eggs. So if you, uh, you like bacon and eggs, you'll never forget this logarithm, bacon and eggs. Here, saying, what is this guy talking about? Well, this is B-A-E. Okay, bacon and eggs, log, bacon and eggs. Again, I'm saying it over again, so you do not forget this. So B is the base, okay? B is the base, A is the answer, and E is the exponent, okay? So for example, if I have 2 cubed, that's equal to 8, right? So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 2 is the base, 3 is the exponent, 8 is the answer. So if I wrote this as a log, I would go log bacon or base is what? Well, this is the 2, right? What's the answer? The answer, right, bacon and eggs. So the answer is 8, and my exponent is 3. Okay, so I could rewrite this exponential uh, equation as a logarithm. This is the whole main idea of logarithms. So uh, it's very important that you understand this relationship. Okay, you got to be able to write a logarithm as an exponential equation. Just remember bacon and eggs. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so some of you might be saying, well, I don't see a, uh, a base down here. Well, there is a base. Let me go ahead and, and tell you what that is. Anytime you see LOG by itself, log like this, Right, which is quite common. This is what we call the common logarithm. It's base 10. Okay, that's really important to know because you have the LOG button on your calculator. That is base 10. And then you have this other one 
called L uh, ln. That's the natural logarithm. That is log, log base e. Okay, e is the natural base e. So, you know, hopefully you're keeping up with me and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm kind of lost. Listen, don't panic. Just make a list of the things you don't understand. If you need to really understand this stuff, and you do if you're in any of those courses, check out those. I have all those courses in my Math Help program, full, complete instruction, tons of different problems solved. You'll get everything you need and much, much more. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and continue on here. So now we have our problem, and we have LOG, but it really is log base 10. It's a common logarithm. So here is our base. Here is our answer, bacon and eggs, all right? So now we're going to go ahead and write this as an exponential equation. So my base is 10, my exponent is 4, and my answer is this. Okay, so here is where we're at. 10 to the fourth power is equal to 10 minus 5x. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. All right, so 10 to the fourth power is 10 times itself, 4 times. So 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is 10,000. That's going to be equal to uh, 10 minus 5x. Subtract 10 from both sides of the equation. I get uh, uh, 9,900, and that's equal to negative 5x. Divide both sides of the equation by negative 5, and you get our lovely answer here, which is negative 1998. Okay, so hopefully, you um, you know, if you didn't understand the steps, you know, going into this problem, the whole objective of this video is to get you to understand. But, you know, doing, watching me do a problem is not enough, okay? It's like if you wanted to get better in basketball, would you watch TV, you know, watch the NBA all day, and you'd be like, oh, look at that. I'm, I watch so much basketball, I must be getting better in basketball. It doesn't work that way, right? You actually have to play the game. Same thing here. You actually have to practice. Now, how much should you practice? Well, let's use another analogy. Let's use our, our, our basketball, uh, you know, analogy here. Would you just shoot one ball? And be like, hey, look at that. I just made the ball. I must be great. I must be able to make that, make shots every single time I shoot. No, you got to challenge yourself. You got to go over here. You got to take, you know, longer shots. You got to, you know, do a variety of different situations. Math is no different. Just like in sports, you're developing a skill. Math is a skill. So you need to do it and you need to practice, practice, practice. But when you practice, you need to be practicing right, okay? Same thing with sports or something like that. Are you going to throw the basketball all crazy? You know, if you practice, you know, the wrong way over and over again, you're just instilling bad habits. So when you want to improve in math, you got to really, you know, realize there are no shortcuts. Okay, if you really want to learn mathematics, learn the concepts. And what I like to do is try to explain this stuff so, you know, you understand uh, uh, and comprehend the concepts, and then you have to do the practice. So anyways, you know, take this to heart. You know, I make these videos, um, you know, for you out there so you can improve in mathematics. But again, I want to make sure that you understand that you have to do the practice. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.